In this video, I'm going to go through one of the tools that is available to help you set the exposure of your shot. I think nearly all camcorders have this feature, but in varying degrees. Uh, it's called zebras, and the reason it's called zebras is because it's all to do with black and white stripes, a zebra pattern. And what a zebra pattern is, is a pattern that will be superimposed on parts of the image in the viewfinder where those parts of the image have reached a certain level of exposure. And in that way, you can look at your image and say, well, that part is exposed to that much. That is either a good or a bad thing. So what do I mean by exposure? Of course, at its simplest, how bright or how dark the image is. You could go from uh, fully dark. For example, if I turn this image here down of my interview subject, there we go. Uh, we could keep going further, but essentially the image has gone fully dark. Uh, but if you go the other way, and open the iris, and then we could even add in a little gain if I just toggle the toggle there. We can go brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter. And, well, you get the general gist. You can go from fully dark to fully bright, a 0% of brightness, if you like, to 100% of brightness. So obviously you want somewhere uh, a happy medium between those two points. And you might think, well, why do I need a tool to help me set exposure? I'll just turn it down until it kind of looks right. That is one way of doing it, and for many shots that might well be perfectly acceptable. If the shot looks fine in your camera and plays back okay, then it's exposed correctly. But there are some times when it is helpful to have uh, an aid to assist you. A couple of occasions that might be true. Firstly, in this kind of scenario where you're doing an interview, you really want the skin tones to be exposed at the right sort of level, and the other uh, time you might want some help is to know when you're going overexposed, when parts of your image are going over that sort of maximum level, because if they go over maximum, they will start to clip, which is the video equivalent of distortion, um, and that does not look pretty, and also you can't recover in the edit from clipped images. So obviously you set your exposure by opening and closing the iris. You can change it by changing the shutter speed, although I always advise keeping the shutter speed at 1 50th if you're in a PAL country such as the UK, 1 60th if you're in uh, an NTSC country such as the United States. And the reasons for that I went into in either, I think it was the recording menus video or the configuration menus video. But for the most part, I would change the iris and the gain if I wanted to amend the exposure. I wouldn't muck about with the shutter speed. So should you do it by eye? As I say, you can. The trouble with that is that the ambient light, wherever you're filming, can adjust your view of how this viewfinder looks. And the viewfinder is not really an accurate gauge of how the exposure is set. So for example, here we are filming this in a a reasonably lit ordinary room with sunlight coming in through the window and the exposure looks a certain way but if I were filming outside the, the brightness of the outside would make this whole screen look washed out just by looking at it. Equally if I were filming in a darkened room then this screen would look very very bright so it's very hard to get a, an accurate idea of how bright the actual image is you're recording just by looking at the view screen. And apart from anything else, certainly on this little Canon I've got here, if I press and hold this button, I can turn the brightness of the screen up. That's not affecting the recording, it's purely the brightness of the screen, but suddenly everything looks brighter, so I might be inclined to turn it down. What I'm saying is you cannot really rely on the screen just by looking at it to get any real gauge of how bright uh, the exposure is. So there are various tools, and one of those is the zebra bars. So I'll turn them on on this Canon here by going function, rec programs, I think it is, come on screen, and then manual exposure. And we have this little button here with the 70 written on it, and that turns the zebra bars on. We can also change them from 70 by pressing the spanner here. We can change it from 70 to 100. Now the 100% is the... Um, level I was talking about a moment ago, maximum exposure. 70% is a particular value that is used when filming um, white Caucasian skin tones because white skin reflects light at around 70%. Therefore, if you set the zebras to 70, when you see the zebra bars on the person's face, you know that they are exposed to 70% and are therefore correct. So let's leave them set to 70 for the moment. Go back a stage and turn the zebras on and see how we're doing. 
Right, instantly we can see that, in fact, I did get it pretty accurate by eye because, oh, let's just get rid of those, we can see that Vicky's face is, by and large, showing lots of zebra pattern all over it, all the skin here. A little bit of the back wall is zebraing as well. That's nothing to worry about. It just means that it too is reflecting at 70%. And you can also see the zebra pattern on Vicky's arm. If I were to turn the exposure up, turn the gain in, gradually the zebraing disappears and other parts here now, the, the chair is starting to zebra, meaning it's at 70%. Since it's darker, than she is, and it's at 70, that means Vicky is now well above 70. In fact, you could even see we've started to completely lose detail and she's starting to white out. If we went much further, then there we go, she disappears into a, a screen of white. Equally, if we turn the exposure the other way, back down to a bit of zebraing on the face there, so that's correct, but then keep turning it down, the zebras disappear off the face and start appearing on the back wall which is a nice bright yellow colour and therefore it reflects lots of light so it will keep being uh, zebraing even while we turn the exposure down. So the general gist, uh, I hope I'm not waffling here, but the general gist of uh, trying to set the exposure for a white skin tone uh, with the zebras is set the zebras to 70 and then coming from darker upwards is best so that you don't accidentally have anything overexposed. So start a bit to do too dark and then turn up the exposure until you start getting a bit of the zebra pattern on the skin tones, and then you know that that is about right. Now on the Canon, the zebras stay on all the time, but if you find that distracting while filming, well, just go back into the um, menus. It's a bit of a faff, but you can go back in and turn them off, and you now know that that is correctly set for that interview. So the other pattern, which I'll just turn on, is the 100% pattern, back into the menus, onto the spanner, turn it up to 100%, and there we go. And now we've said, put the zebra pattern on anywhere where the image has reached its absolute maximum exposure. And the reason you want to know that, as I mentioned before, is because if you go above maximum, the values recorded by the camcorder start clipping and will not record any more information. It is like if I told you to count to 10 on your fingers, fine, 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and then I said, now, keep on going, keep on going, 11, 12, 13, you've only got 10 fingers, so you can only keep recording the values 11, 12, 13 as 10, and that's how it would be recorded. That information then is gone. If you say, well, now we'll bring everything back down again in the edit, you're not gonna recover 11 and 12, 13. Everything was recorded as a flat line of 10s. Turn it down, you'll get a flat line of 9s, eights, sevens, and so on, but you've lost the detail. So that is why it's important not to go above 100%, and that is why most camcorders will offer you a 100% zebra option. And now as we turn the image up, and keep turning the gain up, there'll come a point now where you can quite clearly see this whole stretch of back wall is showing the zebra pattern, and that means that it has hit 100%. If you keep turning that up, all you're going to get on the image is a uniform um, shade of maximum exposure of that color, if you like. Um, you lose all the detail. You'll, you'll notice this most often, for example, if you're shooting outside and you're pointing the camera up at the sky and there's some white fluffy clouds, often you won't see any detail in the clouds. You just see this big white blob and that's because clouds tend very easily to uh, overexpose because they're so bright, reflecting so much light. If you turn the detail down, you turn the exposure down, you'll start to find that the landscape gets very dark, but all the detail suddenly comes back in the clouds. I'm gonna keep turning this up just for the point of example. And now you can see we're getting the zebras on Vicky's face again, but this is not a good zebra. This is not a 70% zebra, which would mean it's in exposed correctly. This is a 100%, meaning that now we're gonna to start to lose all the detail in her face, and this will be a most unpleasant shot were we to actually use that. So that's the 100% zebras and the 70% uh, zebras. I did mention earlier that once you try and pull down in the edit from 100%, you can't get the detail back, and I said that's a slight exaggeration. This is where it gets a little bit complicated, and I'm not going to go into the detail, I think, because it is a, a bit technical, but essentially most camcorders can actually record up to 109% accurately with the detail, and you can retrieve that detail in the edit by turning the levels down. 
it's sort of for historic reasons due to the way that television was invented and the way that digital TV came about. Um, more than that, I won't say. It's still useful to have a zebra of 100% to give you a warning that what you're filming is about to start being clipped. And if you go much above that, then you really will start clipping, and certainly above 109% you will. So that, in a nutshell, is using the zebras to set exposure. Now on the little cannon here, you can either have the zebras set to 100% or 70%, not both simultaneously. On some other cameras, I think Sony's EX range, you have two zebras, so you can set one to come in at 70, and the diagonal pattern is at one angle, and then you can have another zebra set to come in at 100 with a different diagonal pattern, so that you can both expose for interviews correctly, and then also have a warning of clipping. And there are various other tools you can use to help you with exposure as well, such as waveform monitors and histograms, but that is not the subject of this particular video. Anyway, I do hope that was useful, and if it was, please do uh, click the like button and subscribe to the channel. Thanks very much.